Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry this has taken so long for me to get it out. It was supposed to have went out a day earlier. Unfortunately, when I recorded it, I made a few mistakes, and so I'm having to re-record um, completely all over again. That's okay. This is fun, so let's do it. <laughs> So today's episode is about a dinner that I went to that was exclusively put on by Brown Jug in regards to some of the store picks and exclusive things that they're doing for the week of whiskey. So we're not going to be talking about any of the things that um, you might be looking forward to. No BTAC, no nothing like that. That's not what we went to the dinner for. Okay, we went to the dinner for, to talk about some of the store picks that might fly under the radar if you're excited about getting the things like B-Tag, Old Bits, Blanton's, Eagle Rare, whatever. These aren't those. So, let's get into it. So, I'm going to give you pictures of everything um, except for one. There's one that I didn't get a picture of because, you know, to be honest with you, it wasn't really much of anything to take a picture of. It was just a... Just a half pint bottle that was a, a sample. So, nothing for that one, but the rest of them I'll have examples um, and, and, and uh, pictures of, right? So, the first one we're going to talk about is Rabbit Hole. And this is the Blue Label High Gold. So, they had two different picks of these that are coming out. And... These are just awesome. So one is 107.9 proof, and I think the other is 106.7, uh, pretty close to something like that. The 106 proof comes in smelling like a green banana, and, or, and a banana plantain, and kind of that, that, that smell. And then when you take a sip, it doubles down on that, smell, uh, tasting kind of like a green banana with... Um, it also had vanilla in there as well. Sorry, that, that's a lot to remember, so it's, I, I do have my notes written. <clears throat> and just really, really, really nice. And so that is probably one of the most unique tasting uh, bourbons that I have ever had. And I will be picking up a bottle just because it's a conversation. That, every time you have a sip, like that is just so unique. It's one of those where you're not going to drink it. You're just going to have a sip with everybody that you show it off to. Like, this is a cool tasting bottle. Try this. That's, that's where I'm at with that one. I really did enjoy it. Uh, the 107 proof. Now, this was, this was my favorite of the two. And this is something that you would sip. On the nose, there was, um, I really forgot to take good notes because it was the first one that I, that I tried. And I was just so excited to get into it. But what I remember of the nose was a spicy cinnamon. Now, on the palate, I did remember to write things down, and on the palate, it was uh, bread pudding and cinnamon. Bread pudding and cinnamon. That just, that sounded like a good food to eat. It tasted like a great bourbon as well. So, I'll actually be picking up both of those rabbit holes whenever they come out, assuming I can, because they were just so good and so unique. Now, the next one I am going to talk to you about is actually a... Rum. Okay, so I have, we tried Plantation Rum. Now, let me just say that this was probably one of the best rums that I've had in a very long time. It, it had so much to offer. And, and here's the crazy part. It's sub 100 proof, 93 proof on this, on this rum. And it was just exceptional. So on the nose, we got grilled pineapple with vanilla and brown sugar and fried bananas and just a little bit of that like smokiness that you would get from a grill being lit, right? You know, that has that, that smoke coming out. It's good. Yeah, it was, it was so nice on the nose and probably it, it, that might be the best rum I have ever smelled. And one of the best smelling things, period. I really had an amazing nose. So interesting with that kind of grilled pineapple and bananas. And then on the palate, it was, it was really cool. It was sweet. It was brown sugar. It was just this. 
it did it, it, it had the rum flavor but it was just so brown sugary and sweet that <clears throat> literally I would just I would take that and I would put it in a rocks glass uh, with a couple of cubes of ice or a big block of ice and sit in the sun while I drink it not in the shade in the sun like that is just it's just such a a beautiful drink I, I really enjoyed that one and that was the first round that we went into and not only that but it has a really cool um, as you can see in the picture that like twine um, string on the bottle I think that's pretty cool too so the next thing we're going to talk about is a Nashville barrel rum now this was single barrel picked uh, all of these are single barrels um, in the exception of one actually all that I'm going to be talking about are single barrels uh, there was one that we that we tried at the end uh, called Old Louisville and I did not get a picture of it it was seriously hot um, at least proof wise at 148 but it did not drink at 148 I would say it was closer to like 115 and I was really really impressed with with that drink unfortunately no pictures uh, and no notes it was the very last thing and it was kind of like wrapping up the situation so my apologies for that but Nashville rum so this thing 138 proof can we say overproofed rum Here's the deal. It didn't drink anywhere near that hot. Like try 105, 110, like that's where this thing was at. And it was really nice. So here's the notes on that one. So for the nose, you just got sweet rum and vanilla. It was just beautiful. It, you know, if you were to get a rum extract and smell that, that's what it smelled like with some vanilla and, and maybe a little bit of brown sugar. It was just really, really a, a, a beautiful palette and if you're just wanting that basic more rum-ish um, smell. Now, for the palette, we got brown sugar and honey. And I was really, really impressed with this. Very, very easy to drink. I would not even put this in a cocktail, even though there's a lot of cocktails that call for overproof drum. I would not put this one in a cocktail. This would literally be for sipping. It was just that nice. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily a rum sipping guy, but I'm gonna pick up a bottle of that if I'm able to, because that's gonna be something that I can sip on, uh, especially when we get a few of these, of these hot days during the summer. If we do get the kids give us a couple hot days this summer. Um, yeah, in Alaska, we've not, we've not been getting a hot summer whatsoever. And so the last one I'm going to talk to you about, um, before I get into what's in my glass and, and a few of these other bottles is going to be Obtanium. And Obtanium isn't a rum. It isn't a bourbon. It's a light whiskey. And I don't know if you are a fan of light whiskeys or not. But there are a few out there that are starting to really make waves now that they have gotten some age on them. The thing about light whiskey is if it's young, it's young. And so we got some stuff that is not young and is absolutely just oh, delicious. So obtaining 120 proof seven year old, okay? And on the nose, we had vanilla and floral. It was kind of a light nose. You know, it's a light whiskey. It wasn't very pungent on the nose, but what was there was very pleasant. And I, I really did enjoy the nose, but it wasn't anything that was going to stand out and pop, pop, and pop you. You know, like, whoo, yeah, that's good. Mm. Nope, none of that. Um, on the palate, though, you got a light buttery bread with brown sugar and vanilla. I mean, it was just, it, it was like you'd get that, that brown sugar butter from, um, from Texas Roadhouse and spread it over their bread and just, oh, uh, that, it was comparable to that. I just, an amazing, amazing sip. That was 
one of my favorite sips for the night. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, as you can see on the, the screen with the picture that I had posted, it was just good stuff. It really is. I will be picking up a bottle of that. Um, it was, like I said, it was one of my favorites of the night. But now let's get into a couple of these others. And so the first one we're going to get into is Woodenville. Now, Woodenville was done as a store pick last year in 2022, and that's what this is. This is their store pick from 2022. They're coming, and it was 118 proof. Now, they're coming out with a new one. It's going to be a store pick for 23, and this one is going to be 115 proof. And it was some good stuff. And so, if you haven't had this one, um, and you're in Alaska, there are still um, several floating around at the various brown jug stores throughout the state. So, you might have to look a little bit, but I, I know for a fact that you can find some, especially in the Anchorage area. Now, like I said, got a new one coming out. 2023 pick. 115 proof. And here's what it is. So, on the nose, you got green apple and vanilla and cinnamon and a, and a really kind of a tarty citric fruit flavor on the nose. Really, really interesting like, to, to get all of that. I was just not expecting it from Woodenville because this is not that, that on the nose. So really kind of a cool nose. Now on the palate, it is, are you ready? Grain forward with pepper and oak. So if you are a fan of those oak with, um, with a pepper bite, and you are going to love this one because it was everything your dreams were made of. It really is um, a nice sip. It was very pleasant. I recommend that you pick one up if that is your palate. Good stuff. It definitely was. Now, next, this one was... Uh, this one was so good. So next they're gonna be doing a new riff, single barrel pick. And this one is probably the tamest thing that we tried outside of the rum. Um, this one is only going to be 109 proof. Now the one that I've got here is their initial release to Alaska. That This single barrel was 112 proof. And again, really, really enjoy the stuff that New Riff puts out in their single barrels and Brown Jug is killing it with um, their selections. And this this single barrel pick that they're releasing for for Week of Whiskey is, is absolutely no exception to that. And so let's, let's get into, we got Nose, Chocolate Whoppers and Vanilla and Coffee. And, and so it was a chocolate whopper, and then it was one of those um, vanilla and caramel cream candies. That was the nose on this thing. Just, it was so good. So, so good. I, I was really impressed with this. Um, and then on the palate was caramel. And then, I don't know if how many of you are old enough to remember all of this, but if you ever went to Pizza Hut, in the 90s, you used to be able to go into the, uh, the restaurant and they had a buffet bar and you could eat there inside. And then they had these little peppermint candies that you couldn't find. They don't know where they got theirs, but they were different than the ones that, that you would get at like Walmart. And so it tasted like those old school Pizza Hut candies. It was just, oh, it was, it was good really good and I will be picking up one of these um, this is this was one of my top three bottles of the night all right things probably look a little bit different I did have to do a, a slight reshoot uh, a couple of times here now and so we've got four more bottles to get through this next one this brand that came up to Alaska right after I started my my bourbon review collection kind of uh, situation. So I was lucky enough to, to get in early on it. And I'm talking about Lucky 7. And 
I'm talking about the proprietor. Now this is the 15 year. The one that is coming up, the brown jug that the store picked, so I got the whole barrel. This is a six year proprietor. And we refer to it as the Macklemore pick. And the reason why is not because Macklemore picked it. It's because on the nose, it smells musty and kind of dusty, kind of like a bookmobile or a thrift store. Um, those of you who don't know what a bookmobile is, they used to go, they're like a van with uh, all kinds of books from the library. And they would go around to, uh, to places where there were a lot of kids and you could check out books directly from the bookmobile. And it was like checking a book out from the library. So it was like really, really a, an easy way to get kids into reading and it, and it worked. It's one of the most memorable um, things that I, that I have in my childhood is going and checking out. I even remember what the, the bookmobile driver looked like. So anyway, on the nose, like I said, dusty, musty, like at a bookmobile or a thrift store. On the palate, it was very much the the same thing. It was dusty and musty with tobacco and leather. And so it was really unique. It, I'm going to definitely get one. Now, the label isn't white like this one is. It was more of a purplish blue. So there's that. Um, now, the next one. Now, this is a six-year rye by Nashville Barrel coming in at 117 proof that was picked by uh, Alaska Whiskey Godfather. Now, this is not the model that's coming up, but in most of the numbers, it's pretty comparable. So the pick that Brown Jug did is seven year, 119, and it is something special. Now on the nose, it's not. It's just a basic rice spice nose, but it was, really, really nice on the palate with kind of a banana Laffy Taffy that was kind of sugary and sweet. It was really good, really fun to drink. So yeah, it, it was really nice. I will be getting one of those uh, come the week of whiskey in September. Now, this is one that I do not have um, an example for, but it kind of hits home for me, and this next is a label by Nashville Barrel called Nash Tucky. So what Nash Tucky is, is Nashville Barrel has sourced distillate from Kentucky, aged it, and bottled it in Nashville. So they, uh, it's, a, it's a combination of love between the two states because they do share more than just a border. And just like me, the journey started in Kentucky and finished in Tennessee. So I was born in Kentucky, graduated in Tennessee. So it was a lot of love for me on this label. And not just because of the story, but also because it is an eight year bourbon coming in at 115 proof. And it was really, really nice. So it was vanilla and caramel and salted cashews on the nose. It really, really was. Just you could you could easily pick out the salted cashews. It was really nice. And then on the palate, on the palate we had Oregon oak and vanilla and unsalted peanuts. So if you've ever had one of those eight ounce glass bottles of Coke and then pour a pack of peanuts inside, it makes the Coke kind of salty and the peanuts kind of bland. But it's good, something that we do in the South. It, the peanuts, um, I just have a different flavor. Um, and that's what it reminded me of, it, those peanuts, eating it like that. So, yeah, that's, that's what it is. So, sorry, I need, I need a drink. That's good stuff. And that's our last bottle, okay? So, High West Double Rye. Now, High West, this is, this is what's in my glass. This is not what's coming up. 
Brown Jug did a store pick with this, as with all the ones I'm telling you about. And their double rye was finished in Manhattan barrels. And so if you're not familiar with Manhattan, it is a rye whiskey drink that has Angostura bitters, a maraschino cherry, and red vermouth in there with it. And so it really takes the rye whiskey that's already usually got a very sophisticated palate, and then it really throws a lot of flavors in there to make it something really, really interesting. And so on the nose, this was uh, sweet like strawberry shortcake. And I'm talking about the yellow one that has the little dip in the middle that you could get at the grocery stores and you to make your strawberries with all the syrup and everything and a little whoop whoop on top. Yeah, it's just, that was the nose on this thing. It was just beautiful. It just made your mouth water. Like, it was just, it really was good. And then on, on the palate, on the palate was, it was just gorgeous. It was sweet with the cherry of the Manhattan and then also kind of sugary with mint. It was, it was just really enjoyable. It made you feel all sophisticated, like, oh, after two sips, you're like, I'm the most, I'm the most um, interesting man in the world. Yeah, at least that's the way you felt. All right. Oh, and thank you, Brown Jug, for the hospitality and the uh, ability to go out and get to sample all of these. I definitely appreciate all that you do. Well, that was what we got to review. I appreciate your time. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And as I always say, go get yourself. And we'll see you on the next one.